Hello, hello, welcome back guys. We're going to examine an interesting company here, Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, this company has been completely devastated. It has been down about 80%, although in the last week it has been going, has been climbing higher from about 4.6 or so at some point, I believe. It's actually right now sitting at 6 and probably 6.5 or so when the market opens in about an hour after I'm making this video. Now, the one year high was at 30 bucks, and again, it's about 80% down from that high. And you can take a look at the max chart here, and uh, you will also see that uh, the company has been has been in a steady decline pretty much in the last uh, few years. And um, we can examine the financials and see whether it makes any sense to be buying this one. Now, I did take a look at the short interest ratio for this company. It's about it's sitting at about 20% uh, right now is what I saw, which means that the, a massive amount of its float of its outstanding shares or the ones that can be traded, the float, uh, are actually currently held short by investors or traders pretty much. And so this means that there is a potential for a short squeeze and uh, this kind of price action here, this increase, like this 5% right now, could be a, a product of um, a, a potential short squeeze. It's worth noting, it may be an interesting trade, but what about a long-term hold? Let's take a look. Now, remember that this company currently is having a less than a half a billion market cap and this will play some role to its uh, actual price to buy to, to potentially buy the stock the stock price to potentially buy this uh, for because it's been suppressed quite significantly or, already and um, at a half a billion dollar market cap it, it just takes some millions uh, to put in terms of free cash flow to to make a case for an interesting company to buy potentially but there are problems big problems with bed bath and beyond and let's examine what is going on now, the period of the company has been negative. Uh, some years ago, it has been low, but still positive. So the company is uh, close to profitability, but then it's losing money. And in terms of price to free cash flow, again, the same story. Some years ago, it was like high, but still positive. So yeah, it's a story of a company that's going up and down a lot, but it, they have been buying back shares like crazy. And uh, that m looks nice, and it is generally speaking nice, as long as the company has m enough money to sustain this kind of uh, purchasing. I mean, what's the point of buying back shares if you are not really making any money? I mean, if you're getting debt in order to do that, uh, I don't see much point in that. I first want to have a much, much profitable company and then I want them to be using their free cash, their free cash flow to be buying back shares. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense and it's actually potentially very serious uh, for the financials of the company to be losing money in that, uh, in that way, really. And a very, very troublesome thing about the company, take a look at the key metrics here, these key metrics in terms of growth, they're all down and they are all down significantly. Uh, the revenue, the net income, the free cash flow, the total equity, everything is down and some of these are down massively. So this is really, really problematic here because the company is in a massive decline for many years now and it's not in, it's not just COVID. You will see that in 2018, the company was actually sitting at a much higher level than what it is today. So there's about four years, including COVID, but not only COVID. And so these are very, very bad signs for the company overall. And also the company has a, a big amount of debt compared to the equity that they have. That's uh, more likely because their equity is going down, as you'll see here tremendously over the years. And uh, of course, the returns are negative, margins negative. Everything doesn't look great for this company and uh, they don't have a dividend right now. But if you take a look at the dividend history, you will see that they stopped it at 2020 because when you don't have free cash flow, you cannot pay dividends. And this is another very, very bad sign for the company, which uh, has all the signs of a potential bankruptcy even. So people should be very, very careful about holding this one. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention here was the insider trades that I was looking at, at a little bit earlier because there were some purchases that have happened in the last six and three months here. And you can you can kind of see here and the ones that are the most interesting are the ones that have the P purchase transaction type because this means that somebody bought it for their money pretty much, they actually spent their own money. They were not actually awarded to them like an award, for example, as this would be, for instance. So these directors here have bought um, shares at 4.6 and they're actually up right now so they are actually gaining some they are making money but if you take a look at the previous purchases in the previous years and uh, previous months also you will see that uh, massive losses have been occurred have occurred as well uh, about at 25 here 27 19 20 13 uh, 15 and then the company stock price went at four and currently sitting at six so these were not great purchases and even even if there were massive lots very very high ones 20,000 uh, shares over here 
And um, the interesting one to notice here is the $50,000 shares uh, bought at $4.6 here. That's a pretty big amount, pretty steep amount here by the interim CEO here. Interesting to see. Does that mean much? I'm not truly sure, but it, this is a it's a very large amount of stock. That's for sure. And currently, the you know the director is actually pretty pretty much gaining money for the time being. I, I thought it was worth noting, but um, it may not be it may not actually mean much because again we have been seeing a lot of purchases that have gone s south over here. But uh, generally speaking, when you see somebody buying, especially a high uh, officer, a high director, for example, um, an executive then uh, they they may be thinking that the stock price will go up of course they could be wrong but uh, you know it's a uh, worthwhile examining at least now the next thing to see and the thing that i want to, to uh, the thing that i'm mostly interested about is uh, two things frankly the um, the statements of the company because i kind of want to see the story unfold here from 12 billion to 7.8 billion i can remember this decline here is something that you hate to see if you are actually if you actually want to purchase the company but another thing that i hate to see here is the net income being in the negative right now and it used to be positive and uh, what's even worse if you take a look at the balance sheet the company seems to be losing more and more assets here total equity going down and they they kept buying shares through that period of time uh, contributing to the total equity going down but uh, with a total equity of 174 million and uh, total liabilities of 5 billion that is problematic as you can understand and in terms of the cash flow of the company, you can see here some years positive, some years negative. But generally speaking, lately it has been going down and we're sitting at negative numbers right now. Something that you really, really don't like to see here for the company. Now, in the previous years, like if you take a look at uh, fiscal year 2020, for example, they made 313 million in, their free, in terms of free cash flow. That's almost the same amount of uh, their market cap. So if you take a look again at the metrics, remember what I told you earlier, the market cap is sitting at half a billion, so they made like half of it in 2020. This is a substantial amount of free cash flow to make for a, such a company um, valued at um, this, um, this amount. The problem is not the valuation, the problem is that the company is doing worse and worse financially, and this is why it's getting negle neglected by investors. Now if we take a look at the stock evaluation tool, what can you do here? This is a story of negatives, uh, negative, 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 negative net income margins, negative free cash flow margins, <laughs> negative re revenue growth. We can try to do something uh, that uh, assumes that the company will continue be being into the negative numbers, like minus 15%, minus 10 and minus 5, let's just say. So we're still very, very negative about the company's uh, revenue growth here, but we have to be at least marginally positive in terms of their net income margin so i'm going to go one three and five it's not too far but it's still far because the company has been uh, for the most part negative in terms of uh, their net income although in 2018 they did 3.4 percent in terms of the net income margin so they could achieve it but you need to have some sort of profitability in order for it to make sense to buy the company even as though their revenue growth is going down and the free cash flow margin that I'm going to use is 80, 90, and 100 percent of the net income margin. Remember that this is a propor this is proportional to the net income, not the revenue growth. So 80 percent of uh, of uh, free cash flow margin would mean pretty much 5 percent if you compare it to the revenue growth. So this 100 percent refers to the net income. So this is 100 percent of the net income. It's going to be the free cash flow margin here. That's 5 percent. So the annual return that I'm going to be asking for is going to be 13%. I could ask for a little bit more, frankly, because this is a very, very risky company, as you can understand. But let's see what we're getting out of these calculations here. And uh, you would kind of, uh, you should kind of expect that because we already saw that if the company becomes profitable, then their profitability was at great levels. They were making some significant amounts of free cash flow. And so if the company actually does achieve profitability again, then their valuation is so low right now that even even by losing revenue, they can still have a medium, uh, uh, pretty much projection and medium, uh, medium valuation of about 22 bucks right now. Again, even as though they are losing revenue, they have been so devastated in terms of the stock price that um, just marginal profitability would take them at a point where they could become a buy again. The problem is that they are far from that and also they have so much debt, they are doing so badly financially that this could actually end up being a company that will either have to get a ma massive amounts of debt or eventually see themselves bankrupt. And so this has a ton of risk that I'm just not willing to take as an investor. And even though there could be some positives here, 
it would have to take at least a few quarters where the company achieves profitability again for me to potentially think about re-entering this one. So for now, I'm going to be out and so I'm just going to be taking a notice. But I think this was an interesting company to at least examine here. Tell me know what you think about Bed Bath & Beyond and uh, remember to leave a like if, you're, if you like this uh, kind of videos and uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber already and also remember that you can become a Patreon and get access to this too. You can find links in the description box below this video and I'll see you in the very next one guys. Bye bye!